The U.S. Supreme Court made a groundbreaking decision Monday by lifting a federal law that prohibited sports gambling outside of Nevada. Although the move is merely hours old, how it will impact fans is a hot topic. Brett Smiley is editor-in-chief of SportsHandle.com, a company that produces original reporting on regulated sports betting. He said that some states have laws ready to go, though Illinois has conversations that are ongoing. Illinois, they have conversations that are ongoing, there are a number of bills on the table, some of them closer to completion and not Smiley said to NBC Sports Chicago, I think the legislative session runs for a bit longer in Illinois, so there's definitely some runway for them to get something done, I would think with the events from today, they'd be more likely to do so. Illinois legislative session ends May 31st, giving the state a few weeks to put something together. The state has been proactive in getting something together, according to Yahoo Sports' Jay Busby. Illinois is one of many states which took a proactive look at the Supreme Court's case and decided to get ready if the tides broke sports gambling's way, Busby said. In January of this year, the Illinois Senate introduced the Sports Betting Consumer Protection Act, one of two bills designed as a framework for sports gambling in the state, to be updated and codified once the Supreme Court ruled. Smiley mentioned several options for how fans will be able to place bets once laws are in place. The way it's looking in every state is that they'll either need to go to a casino or a riverboat casino, in some cases, he said. They should have an component, so either an app or an website, where you can go. Hopey you won't have to go into casinos to register for any of these but it will be both of those things. Smiley said that it is a bit of a reach regarding kiosks potentially being opened inside stadiums to place bets. However, he said that fans should be able to make a wager on their phones during a game. The specific sports available to bet on will depend on the state, though Smiley said that states will offer diverse menus of events to keep pace with offshore sportsbooks. Ultimately, he said today's decision is a game-changer. This is a watershed moment for sports and sports betting in the U.S., he said. The NFL helped usher in this law in 1992 and what it's really done is only help an underground black market flourish. It's a real game-changer. Chicago Bears wide receiver Anthony Miller will be among 41st-year players to attend the 2018 NFL PA rookie premiere in Los Angeles on May 17-20. High-profile first-round picks like Saquon Barkley, Josh Allen and Bradley Chubb will participate in the event focused on helping players develop their personal brand. It's also where the rookies' official game jerseys will be unveiled and worn in a photo shoot. Miller's rookie football card expected to be in demand, too. The NFLPA rookie premiere is our Super Bowl. The event is so important to us because it gives us the ability to sit down with the top 40 NFL rookies we believe will be the most collectible and will drive the trading card category for the upcoming. It allows us to capture the players in their official Nike jerseys before they step on a field, allowing us to produce trading cards for the entire, capture marketing content and drive sales initiatives. Jason Howarth, Vice President of Marketing, Panini America. The Bears traded with the Patriots in the 2018 NFL draft to acquire Miller in the second round. He'll enter training camp with a legitimate opportunity to become one of Mitchell Trubisky's primary targets in the passing game. He ended his career at Memphis with 238 catches for 3,590 yards and 37 two counts. Chicago Bears, cradle of analysts you could say that. This week is scheduled to be the ESPN debut of former Bears coach John Fox, with his first on-camera spot expected to be on the 8 a.m. Sports Center on Tuesday. I'm not sure what my fall schedule will be, but it'll be more intense, Fox told MMQB's Jonathan Jones last week. I'm just going to kind of get my feet wet. I'm going to be in studio, not doing games. And what that entails yet, I don't know. Fox holds the distinction of being one of only six men in NFL history to coach two different teams Carolina, Denver to Super Bowls, in the select company of Mike Holmgren Green Bay, Seattle, Bill Parcells New England, NY Giants, Dan Reeves Denver, Atlanta, Don Shula Miami, Baltimore Colts, and Dick Vermeil Philadelphia, St. Louis Rams. NFL and football commentary in general stand to take on a distinctly Bears flavor this coming. Among the Bears' presences in booths and studios, besides Tom Thayer, WBBM's color commentator for Bears broadcasts, and Tom Waddle, whose daily work at WMVP ESPN 1000 Radio locally has been augmented by duties with Fox and NFL Network, Jay Cutler may resurface with Fox as a game commentator unless someone again wants him as an emergency quarterback. 
wide receiver Brandon Marshall was let go by the New York Giants, leaving him more time to devote to his inside the NFL gig with Showtime. Although his standing WASNT enhanced by a January rant that the NFL should be ashamed for letting the New England Patriots dynasty endure. Safety Sean Gale works as an NFL analyst for Sky Sports in the United Kingdom. And wideout Curtis Conway serves as co-host of Total Access for the NFL Network. Quarterback Jim Miller is a host for Sirius XM NFL Radio, while defensive tackle Tim Ryan is out in the Bay Area as a radio color analyst for San Francisco 49ers broadcasts. On the college level quarterback Brian Grease serves as a color commentator on ESPN College Game Day, and offensive lineman Jay Leuenberg contributes as an analyst for the Mountain Television Network for the Mountain West Conference.